Okay, so uh, I recently picked up cycling, as in road cycling, and I kind of got it into my head that I want to do a full round island. Yes, it's a thing. Uh, so I've done like a fake round island, meaning our island is like that, so I've gone like an inner circle. So my cyclist friends say like literally no one does that, but I was just too afraid to attempt a full round island, which I think from my place, if I were to try to do it, it would be about 120-ish kilometers. Um, so the one, the furthest distance I've gone is I think about 88 kilometers, and that's like the fake um, round island. So tomorrow, I'm going to embark on my very first full round island, and my friends are very sweet. They've actually uh, agreed to, well, they know that I'm very noob, but they're going to be there they said they'll watch out for me and they even said they will kind of accompany me from start to finish from my start point to finish point so here we go i just wanted to kind of show you in case you're a noob cyclist as well uh, kind of a little bit of the preparation that goes behind uh, the day before you wake up for like an early morning ride we're gonna start at 4 a.m which means i'm gonna wake up at 3 a.m and at 3 a.m you don't want to be doing all these things trust me Right, so the best is to do it the night before. Okay, so you gotta make sure that your tire pressure is correct because for road bikes, this is actually very important. And it's so specific that they it, it's actually tied to your weight. So I weigh about 50 to 54 kg. So the rough PSI for me would be about 85 in front and 90 at the back. So we're just gonna pump to make sure that that's correct. And then we're all set. Now, this took me a while the first time. Again, I caveat and say that I'm very noob. I usually don't do this in a skirt, but here we go. So you unscrew this part, right? Loosening it up, put it in, pull this up to secure it. And then comes the hard part. <laughs> Woo! Fail. With all your might. <laughs> okay, so this is about right, right? So just to check that the tire pressure is about right and then just take it out tighten it back and we're done and you do the same for the back tire okay the other thing because you it's dangerous to cycle without the proper lights uh, make sure your front light and your tail light make sure these are charged so you can see uh, mine use a micro usb so i'm just gonna pop them in to be charged and then uh, once they're charged Okay, mine are obviously not yet charged. <laughs> but once they're charged, make sure you just clip them on here. Like that. All right, so that's the front light. And then for the tail light, of course, that goes on the tail area. Most cyclists invest in a bike computer. Basically, it will um, calculate your cadence and the distance that you travel as well as the speed that you're traveling at so at all times you'll be able to know what sort of speed you're going at and how much distance you've covered I when I started obviously I didn't have this but after I've gotten this I really appreciate it like I always thought it's kind of extra that my friends had it I was like why do you need to know how fast you're going actually it is kind of nice to know so when you're going up a slope you can kind of tell yourself okay I want to maintain this speed and generally you should try to maintain the same speed uh, as far as possible right so this one also also has to be charged. It's also a micro USB. So once it's charged, let's just pretend it's charged. Uh, again, it's just like a simple click into place. Okay, and then I guess the final thing to do is to make sure that you have your water bottle all filled. So I filled this up. Uh, I actually have two bottle cages. So it depends how much water you drink. I'm just gonna pop this into one. Right, and some people actually use the second bottle cage for isotonic drinks. Uh, it's actually highly recommended that you drink isotonic to replenish not just the salts but the calories lost during the ride. Some people even drink like high carbohydrate drinks. I don't know what that is. I actually don't like drinking drinks like that, so I don't know if I'm gonna suffer tomorrow. But um, against my friend's advice, I'm just gonna go with water. Yeah, when I'm, I mean, I like it after I'm done, but I don't like drinking isotonic during the workout. So I figure I'll buy isotonic drinks along the way when we stop for meals, but not while I'm riding. So yeah, that's kind of it. That's kind of how you get ready uh, before any sort of road cycle, especially a long one. I'm gonna sleep really early tonight. I gotta get out at 3 a.m. I'm gonna try to sleep by 10 p.m. later so at least I get in a good five hours of rest and wake up bright and early and hopefully get this round island 120 kilometers done. Wish me luck. So 
Good morning. It's now um, 4 a.m. and I'm about to meet my friends, Claire East Coast, to do my very first round island, uh, round island ride. So I've only ever gone as far as I think close to 90 km, and this would be 100 plus plus plus. I don't want to ask how much exactly. Um, yeah, let's hope I can keep up with these guys. They're all season riders. Okay, we hit the end of East Coast. We're about to enter the dreaded Tanamera <laughs> Park connector that is never end. Uh, these are my friends who laugh at me because I cannot drink water and ride, but I'm getting there. So this is the last water point and then we enter that long stretch. We just done with Tana Mira connector and I think it's time for breakfast. <laughs> Okay, it's now 6 o'clock, we are at Pongo. Don't know what coffee shop this is. These boys are all um, drinking. But I'm hungry, so... <laughs> so now they're all waiting for me to hurry up. Just wanted to say, 6 o'clock, we've done about 40 km. We are one third through. I'm done. We're gonna clear and we're gonna move off to... Silita, Yishun, and then we're meeting another friend at Crunchy. Let's go! We're now at Silita, his chain just dropped, they just fixed it. Uh, it's about 6.30. We're gonna go via Silita to Yishun. Okay, we're in Sunoko South, basically we we'll learned. Uh, I survived the, after Yushin Dam, it was a long straight road and these guys went really fast. <laughs> we're at 57 kilometers. we're going to take a break at this waterfront park. Is it called waterfront park? What? Woodlands waterfront! From East Coast to North Coast. We are now at Woodlands Waterfront. Check out the breaking dawn. And that's Malaysia right there. So I've traveled 61 km since I woke up this morning. It's obviously about sunrise, so it's about 7-ish. And yeah, feeling good so far, but we're only like about halfway through. Like at 80 km, and that Lim Chu Kang bit was quite intense. <gasps> I'm very tired. But then you a short break, we're like three quarter way through though. So I think I will actually survive this. Although the ache in the neck and the lower back is.
I'm at 89km, which is uh, the furthest distance I've done. I think the furthest I've done so far is 88. We are at Jalan Buro, some random petrol station. I'm going to put on my arm sleeve and my bar because there's not much sun, but I think there's some sun last. So. <laughs> and then we're going to start at Pasir Panjang for Makan. Okay, so once the sun is up, this is my usual get up. Buff. The hat. No longer is it up. The brim goes down. I have my arm sleeves. I just forgot to cover my legs today, but never mind. It's actually a pretty cloudy day. But it's good to be sun smart. <laughs> Oh my god, I hit 100, I hit 100k! Yes! Achievement unlocked! Okay, we've made it to Pasir Panjang Food Centre! Ta-da! So, the plan is... Okay, apparently there's a really good um, Malaysian star hockey me. I think it's the KL star one, but it's closed! So that's a bit upsetting. Uh, but I bought some minced meat noodle. That's supposed to be quite good. And we're gonna ride to Labrador Park, which I guess is 2 to 3 km from here, and we're gonna enjoy it in the beautiful surrounds of Labrador Park. Yay! I'm so freaking hungry. I'm also so freaking happy because I finally hit 100 km. Um, yeah, I think, let me, let me check my bike. We are now at 100.9 100 km. Uh, it's my longest ride ever and I feel quite accomplished. I have broken the 100k barrier. I'm quite sure I'll make it home but I also really really need a really happy breakfast first. I'm very hungry. We hit Labrador Park and now it's time for breakfast. Fast for me, see ya See ya <laughs> team Rainbow or Team Black? Oh, really? Same socks? Huh? Okay, we are moving off. It was a quick pit stop toilet break. A few water bottles. You know I have two bottles. And I've refilled them this is the third time. So that means I'm drinking like a lot of water. So we are home free now. We're gonna take... I think we're going to Keppel and Nika Highway and then it's home. We are at 1.04 km. I don't know why. I think I ate too much at our breakfast. 1 1 2 km. I reckon there's another 10 km to get home. If I can do this, it's just 10 km. Just 10 km. Oh. <laughs> Alright, Glenn's idea. We're at the Malayan now. Nice. That is an uh, American uh, building, right? <laughs> in Tennessee, Tennessee. Tennessee. Tennessee, yes. Huh? Oh my gosh, last one came! Come on! I can smell the end. I don't know how KS is going for another like 30k. <laughs> And we're done! Okay, I'm done. <laughs> uh, this crazy one going to Yishun. Pasir is? Potong Pasir. But I'm done at 121 kilometers. Yay! I will clap but I only have one hand. Uh, longest ride ever. 
Then I need to massage my neck. My neck is the part that aches the most. Thank you guys. Good ride. Oh my gosh, guys. I did it. Yes. All right. I wanted to kind of talk to you straight after I got off the road, but I was really, really tired and gross, although that would have been good. Um, and I totally just wanted to clean up the bike, clean myself up before I did anything. So I've taken a shower, but I just want to talk about my 121km ride. Uh, to be really honest, it's not as difficult as I thought it would be. Um, I think the longest distance I've ever done running is a full marathon at 42km uh, and it's nothing at that level. Um, I'm actually not really aching. The part that aches the most is my neck. I don't know if that's just from bad posture. I'm not very flexible, so I don't know whether it's my back posture. Some people say it's I need to get fitted for the bike. I'm not sure if I need a professional bike fit, but yeah, I'm pleased to report it was actually okay. I hit a wall. Okay, in running, we call it the wall, right? But then I heard from cyclist friends that it's called bonking or you hit a bonk. Is that how you use it? I'm not quite sure. Cyclist uh, enthusiast, please drop me a line below. Let me know. Is it hit a bonk or you're bonking or you bonked? Whatever it is, I bonked. Um, somewhere along the 80 kilometer mark, so it was just after the crunchy countryside, we were on the, that long, wide Lim Chukang road and we took a break and by that point, I really needed a break but I also, like after drinking water and all that, to be honest, I wasn't sure I would make it home, right? I, at the back of my head, I'm like, my brother has a van. <laughs> My brother has a side business uh, picking up cyclists, by the way. So I was like, if my brother has, uh, if I really need help, should I call my brother to get me? It actually crossed my mind, although I felt like very loser having to do that. Uh, I didn't tell my friends because I sometimes feel when you talk about these things, it feels more real. So I told myself, no, I will go on, I'll be fine. And to be honest, after I pushed on from the 80 kilometers, it really got better. I don't know why. And then when I hit 100k, there was that acceleration. And then after 100k, we stopped for breakfast, which really filled me up fueled me up, although I think I ate too much parts for me because I was overly full after that, don't do that. Um, and then it was great, actually all the way until I think the last 5 kilometers back, that was when I started to feel that bonk again, I was like, oh my gosh! But by that time, it was just 5 kilometers, I was like, come on Jade, you've come this far, 5 kilometers, I'll do it, right, I'll smash that. So, yeah, I'm so, I'm so excited and I have to say, I'm actually proud of myself for doing this, I didn't Think that I will get this done. I mean, it was always in the plan, but not so soon. Uh, I'm gonna take a good long break. Not gonna do any activity for the rest of today and tomorrow. And then the next time we attempt a challenge together, let's try to get to Lampos one. Thank you so much for watching. Drop me a line below if you have any tips on cycling, anything that you you know you want to share with this very beginner cyclist. Uh, if you have any questions as well, if you two are a beginner cyclist, let me know. I'll try to answer them. Otherwise, I'll catch up with you on Facebook and on Instagram.